You're listening to Morakai Memento. Delve deep into your imagination and experience a fantastical and enchanting journey. If you're willing and able, please support me on Patreon and with super thanks. Now, let's awaken your most passionate desires. Welcome, class. I'd like you to take out your books and turn to page 69. Today, we'll be learning about the torture device called the Wooden Horse. It has other names, referred to as a donkey, mule, pony. There are two iterations. We're going to focus on the stationary one. It's sort of set up like a pommel horse, only there's a triangle at the top with the sharp end pointing upwards. And our dutiful victim or punishee is made to straddle the horse, legs astride. I don't think I need to explain where the point goes. You can imagine it on your own, I'm sure. There were several ways to force someone to indulge in this torture. Sometimes they were forced to ride the wooden pony bareback. That is to stay stripped completely naked, leaving no protection at all between the horse and the softest, most vulnerable bits of their body. Primarily, the pain and torture was inflicted by the person's own body weight, making it a relatively easy torture to execute. If the prisoner's captors were feeling extra nasty, they could add weights to the victim's ankles or hands, putting even more pressure on the most delicate places of anatomy. It's said that the result is that people couldn't walk after they were forced to ride the wooden pony. And they had to be carried back to their cells. Some extant texts say that people were tied to the wooden pony. And others suggest that the person was forced to ride it untied, particularly in the American Civil War. The victim had to sit astride and a guard would stand there with a gun. So they had to keep themselves in position on the wooden pony, lest they be shot. So think about it. Being a prisoner, taken to the place of torture, being stripped naked, and of course, when such things happened, the guards would point and laugh at you. Humiliation is always a part of this, making you feel small and insignificant, like you are. And then perhaps your hands are bound behind your back. And you're lifted up 
over the wooden pony, and a guard on either side pulls your legs apart from each other. And slowly, ever so slowly, your tender bits are lowered into position, and you feel the wooden peak of the pony bite into your nether regions, irritating your genitals, feeling uncomfortable at first. And then as more and more of your weight is given to you to support, you begin to feel the agony. All of your weight resting on that single point, the downward pressure tremendous. You have to hold yourself on or face the wrath of the guard with the gun pointed at you. So you have to balance in this uncomfortable, well, torturously painful position by your own force of will, or die, up to you. Victims were made to sit astride the pony for two hours. I suspect you'd be crying after the first five minutes. Your legs dangling, using your thighs to keep you from falling off, yet trying desperately to shift position so that the pressure points aren't at the same exact spot for minute after minute, hour after hour. And you wonder if any part of your body is going to work. Will your anatomy work? Will you be able to walk? What is going to the toilet going to be like? There's nothing but torment for you. And in the throes of agony, depression will seize your mind and you'll feel completely hopeless. Maybe, just maybe, if you're lucky, the guards won't strap weights to your legs to add even more pressure, more searing pain to the tender area between your legs. And if you're the luckiest person in the world, before your two-hour ride is up, you'll pass out and fall off. So take some time to think about the agony you would experience if you were a prisoner and that was your punishment. Class dismissed.